Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome everybody, this is David Navarra speaking. I'm a Czech Grandmaster and uh, I participated in two tournaments of the Meltwater Chess Tour. And uh, this is also one of the reasons why I'm playing Benter Blitz here now. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, I accepted a challenge for from a strong opponent. We are playing a sort of gambit uh, against uh, Queen's Gambit. Uh, and as you can see, I'm not very skilled when it comes to using my mouse. So, oh, not here. So, Black, oh, Black has sacrificed a pawn for quicker development. And... Uh, he hopes to get enough compensation, and I hope that he won't. But uh, to neutralize uh, Black's attack, one needs to play carefully. So let's try a3 to protect the b4 square. It might be useful in various lines. But I'm not very quick with my mouse, so you can see that it might be a bit problematic. I cannot play bishop e2 now because he would have been able to play bishop h3 attacking my queen on d1. So that's why I first played bishop d2 in order to protect my queen before completing the development. Now we are playing without increment, so I need to castle and now I will go here. And recapture because uh, I hope to open the road for my queen. And as you can see, I will go here and then here. No matter what black plays, I will go there anywhere. I mean, this is pinned now, so I will take on f4 and or black can play rook e8, but he didn't. So now let's play rook e1. I'm threatening some tricks now. I don't know what happens after rook e8, by the way. I'm not sure that my play was so great at this stage. Oh, there is a knight, so let's take it. And I'm probably winning now. Bishop c6, so black would like to attack g2 if possible, so I will attack his queen first, and possibly also his bishop then. Is there any counterplay with bishop f3? No, there is none. There is not bishop takes g2 either. So I believe to be winning now. It's also interesting that white's queen attacks both rooks, so the rooks are not so mobile, not as mobile as usually. So I'm sort of winning. I will then probably accept a challenge from someone else uh, because there are more people, so I will mostly play uh, try to play against uh, as many people as possible, one after another, and maybe then some rematch. I don't know, but I cannot guarantee it now. Maybe if there is some GM, I might play two games, but uh, we will see. 
I am two pieces up, so I guess it should be winning without too many problems. I will now bring my bishop closer to the king. But I can play queen f3 here, but I mean, with two pieces up, it should be easy to convert. And now I'm attacking b7, so I have won. Okay, thank you for your game. And now someone else, so Nimtsola Zana. Okay, let's accept. Actually, I played against someone with a similar name on Lee Chess not so long ago. So let's see what happens now. I'm not sure whether it was the same player or not. So let's go here. I will play it solidly. And h6 to protect my bishop against some attack, which comes anyway. I'm not sure if h6 was so great, but let's see what happens. It's just blitz. Oh, there are more and um, more challenges, as you can also see. So I will probably play it a bit differently. I don't want to play c5 because I would like to hide my king somewhere, and king side is a serious option now. Uh, queen side, sorry. I would like to castle here, perhaps, because the other side is no longer that safe. So bishop. F3 is a bit surprising, so to speak. I can also play knight e5, by the way, but okay, let's make a normal developing move now first. Oh, I haven't realized that this was the idea. So let's go. White has to take on h1. And now I should play some good move. So what can be a good move? Let's try knight d7. Maybe it's not optimal, but I don't really care. We will see what happens. F4 is really optimistic because I believe to be able to attack White's king now because his king is a bit unsafe and he still needs some time. Maybe we need to now to complete development. Queen G4 is quite optimistic. So let's take. I like taking pawns. A friend of mine, Pentala Hare Krishna, is making fun of me for this. But uh, sometimes it's good to take pawns. And sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's good to ca good to castle, but I'm not sure whether it is the case right now or whether I should insert some move first. So let's try not e5. I'm not sure about this move. Maybe it's not that great. Maybe I should have castled instead. But it should not be such a bad move. Okay, unfortunately, I am no longer able to castle right now because the c8 square was protected. So let's play this. I mean, I misplayed the game a bit, but hopefully not so much. So um, it's not nice, really. Not so nice. I would like to get rid of white's queen, even if it's connected with a pawn loss. I mean, it's not an optimal scenario. I misplayed the game somewhat, but black should still be doing well. Actually, I should have castled earlier because now um, there was e takes d5 and it would not have been so great for black, just perhaps somewhat better, but not more. But now it looks fine again, again and again. So I will play d4 just to close the position because I was not happy about this so-called battery at taking b7. So now it should be fine, except for my time, of course. So I should speed up and maybe I will switch to playing on the touch screen anyway, because I'm just more used to it. I'm, accustomed to it. So, I mean, now every second might be important. Oh, why didn't I take on d1? <laughs> but okay, better late than never, let's put it this way. Shall I just remove it? Oh, okay, let's take it anyway. I'm a rook up and this should be winning even with little time left. Okay, thank you. 
So next game, Zevich, for example. And I will play d4 again. Maybe I will then play something else, but somehow in online chess, I'm mostly playing d4 because I know which ideas can I show and which not. This is an interesting pawn sacrifice. Uh, uh, there was an article in Chess Base magazine by Grandmaster Roman uh, Edouard of, of France. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I have not read the article really, but um, I, I mean, I read it a bit, but not carefully enough. So I don't remember how should white play it. I only remember that it is very dangerous for black when white plays it correctly. So let's see whether I'm able to do that or not. Oh, my d5 pawn is in a bit of danger, but so far it's indirectly protected. So maybe I should really read opening articles before trying such sharp lines like this. I mean, the pawn is indirectly protected because I have some bishop e4, bishop takes a8, but now I should really concentrate and try to play something good contrary to some of my previous moves. So I will try to open the position because I have a better development. So it's important to open the position against Black's king. And if I fell in this uh, after b4, maybe I could also stabilize the position, but now I will try to open it as soon. Ah, I should have played b2, b4 perhaps, maybe not, I'm not sure, but there was such an option to play this because if Black had taken, b5 would have been hanging. But now it is getting very sharp, so I should develop my pieces as quickly as possible and attack Black's uh, pawns first and hopefully his king next. So let's start with pawns and uh, then with the, proceed with the king. But how can that be achieved now? I'm not so happy with my play in this game. Actually, Black has a good position, but I will try to confuse him. After all, maybe it's not so good for him. I mean, I'm only a pawn down and uh, Black is underdeveloped and still needs to develop the bishop somewhere and the, and castle and it takes several attempts, for example, g6, bishop g7 and castling or whatever else, but uh, I mean, it requires some time and uh, I should be able to use this time to create some attack. So I know it's not good to exchange queens when I'm uh, ahead in development, but on the other hand, uh, Black's queen, king side is underdeveloped and I hope to exploit this now because all of my pieces are playing, whereas Black's pieces are not. So let's see what happens now. I'm sort of threatening knight c7 check when I want to exchange the bishop and then perhaps play rook a8. And I mean, it is an obvious threat, but not so easy to parry because now, for example, I can perhaps play rook a7 and hopefully I will find some good reaction to knight c5. I considered bishop a4 or similar tricks, but I will probably go for something slightly different. Let's play it this way. And I should not remove now because when the opponent can take en passant, it is very dangerous to remove because if he doesn't take, I might leave a piece en prise, or I mean, which can be taken for free. So. I'm thinking how to attack Black's bishop, whether I should attack Black's bishop now or maybe play something else. So I'm almost sure that there is something very, very good in this position for white, but uh, I'm not sure what exactly can it be. So let's start with this move. Oh, I'm very, pretty much down on time. So maybe I should think more and speak less or maybe think less and play quicker. That's the idea. So there are some mating threats, but 
too little time left. So what to do with it? So, so let's give a check first. Another one then. Oh, maybe I'm threatening mate in one on c7. Oh, c7 is the main threat. So what comes next? Someone is going to lose on time and probably it will not be me this time. Although it happens to me, oh, I'm going to mate. King d7 allows mate in one and knight d4, it's very nice. And king b8 allows mate in two. I mean, king b7, I mean, this is mate. And if black went to king b7 instead, I would be able how to make a line. I mean, king b7, I have rook b8 and bishop b5 mate. So my conception was perhaps more or less good, although I don't claim that all my, uh, I don't claim that all my moves were good. I rather believe the contrary. So there is some challenge for quite some time, crypto, so let's accept. Now I will try to accept the oldest challenges and then we will see what happens next. Okay, let's play bishop b4. I'm normally not playing this move. It's very aggressive, but also a bit risky. A move favored by Grandmaster Alexei Shirov, among other players. Okay, knowing the theory of this line would be good. I don't quite know it, to be honest, but uh, okay, still I can play some halfway reasonable moves. Actually, Black has given his bishop pair, but has a good development in this position, which also matters, so I will try to capitalize on this. Uh, I don't claim that knight c6 is the best move here, but it makes sense in this respect. I want to develop my pieces as quickly as possible. And uh, I think it's around equal. Now, knight f5 is, uh, is an interesting idea, and uh, we will see what happens next. I don't know if I should go to e5 because my queen could be exposed there. So I will just go to e6 and try to play something else instead. I would even consider playing knight e5 and after b3 some b6, bishop b7, but uh, some ideas based on f3 could be unpleasant then, so let's play classically now for the time being. I'm not the most classical player, but I have classical chess education, so I'm able to play classical chess when needed. And now I can either take a pawn to limit what's to complicate what's development or push d4, which also looks attractive. So it's a pleasant choice. But I can only play one of the two moves. If I take what can play b3 with uh, reasonable compensation, if, and if I play d4, what can play d3, perhaps with approximate equality. I like taking pawns. So why not? Queen a4, I missed, but uh, it doesn't matter. I think b3 was a better move because what needs to activate his bishops as quickly as possible, whereas now, I'm ready to bring my bishop into play and uh, white's queen is rather exposed on a4. And those two pawns uh, also prevent white's development. So now I'm happy. I have bishop d7 coming with tempo. And uh, if white plays queen b4, then I can consider some attempt to trap his queen after a5. I'm not quite sure what will happen then. Knight d5 is a move, but white's queen can unfortunately retreat. So maybe I should think quickly. OK, let's go. I believe it works. Because if white takes on b7, I have bishop c6 first, and perhaps knight d5 next. And the queen does not have so many squares, so I'm sort of happy now. I'm a pawn up. I gained some time. and. Uh, I mean, not on the clock. I guess we are playing without increment again, so I should probably speed up a bit. Okay, I told you I like taking pawns, so perhaps I will no, I will make no exception now. I really like taking pawns. Now, okay, it's true that I also 
Maybe should not have done this because a5 is hanging, but I don't care. I only care about rooks. And now it's time to start some attack, perhaps. I have some idea, but would prefer to remain silent for a while. I mean, if White played the other rook on d1, he would have been able to take and to, to play bishop f1 later on to protect the g2 square. But now I'm ready to recapture and play queen h3 with mating threats. So it is getting very dangerous for White. But with little time left on my part, it is not clear whether I will be able to did the attack convincingly enough? Let's see what happens. I have 46 seconds. It could be better. I'm wondering what happens if white plays h3 now. I mean, he will not be able to take on f3, but on the other hand, uh, there is no, nothing immediate, I think, perhaps. So let's go back just like this. I'm a pawn up. I'm happy. I can play bishop knight d3 if I want to. This should not work. I mean, h3 is still hanging. So if white takes like this, I can recapture and there is mate in two. Thank you. Next one. Maybe here. So 23 minutes, green over belt. I think we have not played yet. So let's accept. So c4 for a cha change this time. Oh, it's three plus two. Okay, why not? But if the opponent doesn't appear here soon, I might skip this game to give chance to the others. Okay, great. The opponent is here. So green word. But okay, it looks like uh, written. Okay, it's not exactly German. So it, to will probably be some other uh, some other language not so far from German because in German it would be written with W instead of V, but most likely it means green green word. So let's go here. It's sort of Dutch defense. I can remember Master Simon Williams playing something very similar against Radek Wojtaszek in French League many, many years ago, and he was surprisingly successful with it, although it looked a bit like coffee house attack, but uh, not so easy to repel, and uh, Radek made some mistake and eventually lost, so it was quite a surprise. But here I think I am... I think I have quite some time, so I mean, not only on clock, but it might take like some time to start an attack against my, my king side. So I'm sort of happy. G5 is possible. Actually, I have noticed that I'm not playing these positions very well. I mean, when someone started such an attack against me on uh, in some online games, I was not always reacting convincingly enough to it, but I hope I should be able to repel the attack. I can even play f3, but it is uh, always questionable whether one should do that or not, because it opens quite some lines, but not only those which I would like to open, but also those which I would prefer to keep closed. So let's play f3 just to... Uh, Counter Black's ambitions on the uh, on the king's side, so we will see what happens. I want to open a diagonal for my bishop, and uh, it leads to was it to a position with mutual chances. And queen g6 is sort of surprising. Oh, okay, actually, it's logical. Surprisingly logical. So what can I do now? I will play b5 just for fun. I have some idea. I mean, if black takes on d5, maybe I can even sacrifice the queen by taking. Of course, I missed this one. What can we expect from me here in blitz? I mean, 
I have been blundering pieces left and right in blitz recently, and when not blundering, then at least most slipping. But okay, I believe actually my position is good here because black cannot take on c4 because of, okay, queen d5, queen f7. Maybe he can, but he should not now when I played knight d5 with tempo again. So I'm happy. Uh, I'm attacking f6, attacking c7, which is more, more relevant. And uh, now I might perhaps attack something more, but I need to calculate it well, which is not always easy in Blitz. I mean, in Blitz, it is very hard to distribute one's time and when one lacks practice, it, or when one is out of form, it can be uh, very difficult then because one should not uh, think for too long on the moves. But on the other hand, uh, it is uh, important to calculate when it is needed. I mean, to spend time at some moments and to know well when it pays off to spend time. Or oh, what did I do? There is bishop a6. I should not have exchanged them. C6, it was not a great idea. I wanted to play bishop d2, but there is knight takes c4 and uh, queen takes c6 is at best unclear. Not as great as I had expected it to be. So something went wrong with my play. So I should perhaps speed up and... I wanted to say something impolite, to speed up and stay silent, to put it mildly, but uh, uh, actually staying silent might be a very reasonable idea. <sighs> I don't like my position here. Really don't like my position at all. So I should play quickly. There is nothing else to be done in this position. Play quickly and hope for the best and try to exploit the unsafe position of Black's knight on a5, but I'm afraid Black can probably deal with it. 20 seconds against almost two minutes. It's not so great. I have some threats, like queen a4, e4, possibly also something else. I mean, this is a threat, this is a threat. Oh, hopefully, I mean, with two second increment, I should be able to deal with the time trouble. I mean, position is another problem. It's not great because I sh should not have exchanged here on c6. It gave Black an opportunity to activate his bishop and to attack my pawn. Hmm. What to do? What can be done? I will attack the knight. Maybe I should have exchanged rooks first. Maybe not. Uh, I'm. Not really sure. There are quite some tactical motives, actually. I can see, I saw another one. I saw bishop d3, but maybe this works really for black, unfortunately. Someone seems to be heavily underrated here, and it's not me. <laughs> rook b2, no, rook b2 doesn't work. Now I take, and I'm fine, I'm a piece up. I mean, maybe there is some counterplay, but it should not be enough. I mean, if black takes and plays f4, I can perhaps just take on a2, and I'm probably doing well. I cannot see any mate. At worst, I can play king g1, then. And mostly, it's a reasonable choice. Maybe I can even take it, but I don't want to really. I mean, I want to play it safely now. So let's play it safely. Oh, I won. OK, it was a tough game, really. Okay, so what is there next? I played against the uh, Monkey King, so there is a... Uh, sorry to Shadow Mate, but I will first play against uh, Fide Master. Young Fide Master. So... B3, we have already seen this, so this time I will play E5 against B3. So it transposes into a sort of French uh, defense. And I actually know this line. I only have problems to recall how to continue. So it often takes me some time to recall 
all the lines and like this, maybe d6 was more precise than what I played because white could have played bishop e5 and bishop g3 if needed. I remember this is about equal. I played it against international master Ilya Agieski of Russia in uh, in a casual, I mean, in a blitz game, three plus zero on another website. So I know a bit about this and I think I even played it in the very same way in that game. But here captured with the pawn. So let's play d5. Also Badur Jobava plays this with white from time to time and he played it in the World Cup in Batume or Baku. I don't know. World Cup in Baku 2016, no, 2017, I guess, but most of the people don't care about those details. World Cup in Baku 2017, I think it was. And he bet some strong Chinese grandmaster, possibly it was Wei Yi, maybe also Ding Lijian, I'm not really sure. So black has achieved a comfortable position. I have some special advantage here, which does not matter that much. And, uh, maybe queen d6 was more circumspect at this point because white can castle queen side. Uh, I think it's not such a big problem for me because I can ignore it, but maybe it made more sense to withdraw my queen to d6 where the queen stands well in basically all the lines and I would be able to play bishop e6 then, which is also a very reasonable move. I mean, if white castles here, queen side, I should not take because of g1, because g7, oh, what is this? Sorry for <laughs> those arrows. Uh, I was afraid that by canceling them, I could make a move and not a good one by mistake. So the question is whether I should start checking here, but I don't like queen e5 then, so I will first take and then give a check. I'm a check grandmaster after all. So let's go here. I'm not very sure about what I played in the last few moves. I think it should not be too bad, but it it is not necessarily too good either. I mean, queen h3 was not good in view of queen e5, perhaps, because what it could centralize his queen then and and also cause me some problems. I don't like my position. There is rook g5 coming, so my pawn is in danger. I understand h6 is not a great move here. Why should it be a great move after all? But maybe I can find some way how to deal with the problems. I'm not willing to give this pawn c5. Not really willing to do that. So oh, it's really bad what I played now. Really, really bad. But OK, maybe. It's just blitz, maybe. One can live with bad moves there. But h6 was not good. I have weakened my king quite a lot. You can see how weak my king is now. It's not great at all. Something went wrong. Somewhere something went terribly wrong. So maybe I will play the first rematch now and then play against the player who had challenged me also some 20, uh, some 30 minutes ago. I apologize for not accepting the challenges in due order. I mean, it is not always easy and I'm here sort of new. I want to play more games against the, uh, oh, what's this king? Okay, why well, don't to take on f7? Not that I would have been happy about it, but uh, at least I will prevent bishop d3 from coming. It was another unpleasant idea, which I really disliked, but now I can take and I can at least take a pawn. Maybe rook d7 first was a better choice because threat is often better than its execution. Yes, it was a better move <laughs> because also maybe, I'm not sure really. So at least now there is no mate. But uh, my king is not very safe. 
Okay, it could have been even worse than that. So I'm not really unhappy with the outcome of the complications. F4 came as a surprise. So can I give a check now? And now I should think about what do I want to do with my queen in this position and whether my king is at least remotely safe enough or when, whether I can attack white's king. I mean, c4 would be quite an interesting move to open lines against white's king, but I'm not sure about it because I have a weak back rank and uh, I'm afraid it would be too optimistic. So, <sighs> okay, let's play this. Luckily, rook takes g7 doesn't work because I can exchange queens with check. Oh, okay, it doesn't work for plenty of reasons. So there was a threat rook takes h6, which I need to parry. Actually, material is equal. Uh, there is no direct mate. I mean, I'm not very happy with my position even now, but uh, it had been worse. So let's play. And I have better time, so I would like to exploit that. Queen c2, it's maybe a sort of concession. Now I can exchange the queens, which I tried to do a few moves ago, but I would prefer to play it differently now. I'm already getting ambitious, so I should not blunder a pawn on g7. It's not the best way to show one's ambitions. So if I play queen d7, white has queen e5, so I will exchange the queens after all, but maybe under my conditions, not under the opponent's conditions. I'm not sure if my conditions are more uh, advantages for me. I actually have quite some doubts about it because, uh, frankly speaking, I wanted to play queen d7. Oh, I missed this, of course, as usually, but I'm used to blunders, so it's not a problem. It will not put me... Uh, it will not put me off the seat. I mean, sorry for my English. I mean, I'm mentally ready for the fact that I can blunder. And uh, when one is mentally ready for it, uh, it is easier to cope with some, with such problems, at least in theory. So let's play. I'm probably lost, but uh, there is a lot of play ahead. So what can I do? Why not this way? I like to advance my pawn. Queen e6, what's the idea behind the move? Maybe I should play something before losing on time. It looks like a great idea, so let's do this. What have I done with my rooks? It's terrible, really. <laughs> they cannot move. It's really terrible. Oh, my rooks are suffering. I don't like my position. I don't really like my position. Is anyone going to help me? I'm going to lose on time. Is the opponent going to help me? I don't think so. I'm afraid he is not. But maybe now I can at least untangle my rooks. It's great because it had been really, really bad what I have done with my rooks. I'm not sure about this move, actually. I would have preferred to block the e pawn, but at least now is it perpetual? What is going on? It's not exactly perpetual, so I need to activate my king. Is there no mate really? Okay, no mate anywhere. So let's make a, make a draw or shall I play for a win? Okay, let's make a draw. I'm willing to play for more, but I mean, it's not so easy in this position. Because if I take on e4 at some point, there could be f7 and the pawn could be hard to stop. So do you want to play a rematch? I mean, this was an interesting game. I mean, the most interesting so far. So I apologize to the other viewers, but I think it is good to see dramatic games. Uh, and maybe no rematch. Okay.
then and I will accept some other challenges. So some of the, okay, oops, get the crypto. I think I played against crypto. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I did. Marium, Fatima, and Shadow Mate. So now those two users. Sorry, hopefully I'm not missing any other challenge there. So, okay, E6. I'm mostly playing this in my online games and uh, Okay, b6, queen's Indian defense. Bishop a6. Knight bd2 is a reasonable move now. A bit less popular, but uh, not bad at all. d5 is one of many reasonable options against knight bd2, apart from bishop b7, c5, and so on, and so on. So I will play it perhaps in the same way as many other of my online games. Like, okay, I wanted to push c5, but maybe it's not such a great idea right now. So let's play it solidly. If I can play solidly, which is far from certain, but I can try. We will see what happens. Maybe even I can play solidly. There might appear some position with hanging pawns. And uh, it sounds a bit terrific, but it's just a name for a pawn structure, which appears if white exchange is here, c takes d5, e takes d5, b takes d takes c5, b takes c5. And Black will have a sort of pair of isolated pawns, and it can be, I mean, those hanging pawns can be strong, but can be also weak. It depends on how much piece activity can Black develop or, or on how effectively can White attack them. So there are plenty of challenges, and maybe now I should try to resolve the situation in the center in some way in a favorable way, so it's not so easy. Okay, I will exchange material. I will try to play it simply this time, maybe. Something simple. Let's go for it. Actually, I'm again down on time as usually. But I'm used to it. It's not a big problem, not a big deal. Soviet players uh, expressed an opinion that uh, a class of a player should tell in a relatively simple position with little material left. So I'm not sure if I will be able to prove that. But uh, it's true that now at least what has a small weakness on c4. And uh, that I have achieved some favorable exchanges. I mean, it is good for me that the opponent's bishop pair is no longer there. Rook c6. I could also play rook d8, but I believe that the end game might be good for black now. The question is how to attack white's pawns and when to do this. So let's try knight d3. Maybe I should have activated my king first, but. Uh, I like concrete chess and I'm threatening some ideas like knight b4 or even knight e5 at some points, but not now, definitely. So now I'm winning a pawn as this pawn on h7 cannot be taken. It's very much poisoned because I would have won white's bishop then. So I just need to consolidate my position to bring my knight back. Bring back, bring back, bring back my horse to me, to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my horse to me, to me. My horse is on the square C3. My horse is over the sea. My horse is supporting past pawn. 
or bring back my horse to me. Sorry, it's not great now. <laughs> really bad. My chess is better. So let's play chess and uh, I will promote now. Promote my pawn or win a piece. But can choose. So now I will promote my pawn. Check and I C1. Maybe there's still C6, but I can take on B3 anyway. I'm in time to stop white's pawn. So A2, A1. What is going on? I want to trap white's bishop just in case. I mean, it was not really needed, but why not? Okay. So what was the other challenge which has been the shadow mate? I guess it is. Yes, sorry for accepting only now. I mean, there are many players willing to play, maybe not as many as for some bigger names, but still too many to play against all of them. So against all of you, sorry. So it is sort of tricky. We might play some structure with an isolated pawn, or maybe not. Against d5 there would be some, but now White has achieved a favorable version of English opening. As you can see, I my command of English is pretty good, although it could still be better. So what comes next now? Bishop c5, I mean, there is a similar line, but a6 is not the most useful move here. So white should be happy because time matters quite a lot in such positions. Black is a bit underdeveloped. So white should be better here. But on the other hand, objective evaluation does not matter so much in blades because time is important. It's important not to blunder anything. and. Uh, we will see what happens next. Getting an inferior position in blitz uh, is not a tragedy. The whole game is ahead. <sighs> so what should I do now? I don't think it should be good for black, but uh, not trusting Black's position is one thing, and being able to prove that is a different one. It's another one. Bishop e7 is careful, but maybe a little bit slow. I'm wondering whether I should play queen d2 or c5, or perhaps both one after another. Rook c1 looks also like a reasonable move. So, okay, let's play c5. It's not, not the best move, almost for sure, but it cannot be too bad either. I want to take a grip on d6. Maybe now I will provoke some weakening move. If black plays e5, the d5 square will be quite weak, and I will just go back, bishop g5, and then take on f6 sooner or later. And if black plays knight e5, he gets into a pin, and I might play queen d4 then. And after queen d8, now I can play bishop d6 at the proper time, which perhaps has not come yet. I will first make a normal move. Actually, knight a4 was perhaps very, very strong. So let's play it now, because the knight will be great on b6. Let's just play it like this. e5, I mean, it's a sort of weakening. So I can either take on c6, but then black could weaken my king a little bit, or I can just go back. So let's just go back and see what happens next. I'm ready to play knight b6 now. 
I'm ready to take on d6 if or on if black advances his d1. Not g4. Well, I should perhaps withdraw from the exchange. Avoid the exchange. I mean, I'm going to win this one, but win this one on time. But maybe even on position. So not b6. Actually, I perhaps could have taken on c6 first and inserted bishop a5, which was very, very strong, but it is a bit unusual idea, and I only realized it regrettably after playing my move. It was very, very strong, but uh, the game continuation is not bad either. I mean, I just missed a direct win, which is not great, but life goes on, and my position is still very, very good. I'm wondering why am I getting some sort of accent in English, which I did not have. I mean, I mean, I had, but a different one. So, now I'm winning an exchange if I want to. And I want to win an exchange. Although winning on time is not bad either. So let's do that. So let's do that, but how can this be achieved in the easiest way? So maybe this way first. Sorry. I mean, I'm joking. I'm not flagging very much, but uh, generally time is also a part of the game. So my position was already winning. But uh, I mean, it is not enough to achieve an achieve a winning position. One also needs to keep enough time to finish it. I actually don't like bullet because it's too quick for my taste, too much of lagging and too little of uh, of pro purchase content. Hopefully, black does not take on. Okay, I will retract the pre move when I am joking about taking on e four because. <laughs> I mean, normally one can remove castling here, but when streaming and speaking, it could be tricky. Now white has more space, and actually white can even let black exchange on d4, and it's good, but d5 is good as well. Black can sacrifice a pawn if he wants to. Now he will not be able to do that anymore. Immediate b5 was perhaps a better way, but I'm happy with my position. I have a spatial advantage, and uh, now I want to prevent Black's counterplay and slowly improve my position. Although improving it quickly would also be nice, but not always possible. I'm preventing the e5, e7, e5 advance now because the d6 pawn is way too slow, uh, way too weak, sorry. And I would also maybe like to push e4, e5 myself one day, not now, after careful preparation. My next move might be bishop f1, just to activate my rook then. The bishop isn't doing, doing nothing on e2, so maybe now it will not be bishop f1, because my bishop was hanging. It was also one of the reasons why I did not play e5, which actually becomes quite a nice option right now. I don't know if I'm ready for opening the of the position, but let's try it. It's just blitz, so it cannot be. Too bad. Now the point is that my bishop can also go to f3 in some lines so where it will be more active than on f1 after all. The question is whether I want to exchange dark squared, dark squared bishops or not, because black's bishop is strong, although one could assume the opposite, but the bishop was strong and it also protected black's king. 
would is no longer that safe. So I believe my decision was right. And now maybe I can push a5 to weaken black spawns, or I can play for attack, which suits my style better. And maybe it also meets the needs of the position better. So let's start with queen b3. I'm still ready for both plans. Flexibility might be important in such cases. And now I will decide depending on Black's reply, on Black's reaction. So now let's go knight e4 for attack. I mean, a5 was also possible, but then it made more sense to move earlier than now. I want to play against Black's king and to decide later about the placement of my bishop. It should not stay on e2 forever, but uh, I'm still not sure whether I will go on f1, f3, or even g4. So now I should, maybe there will be some, okay, d6 looks nice, but there is queen c6 and it opens diagonal against my own king. So let's, I, I'm not sure if this is a good move because black can recapture with the pawn and he will be sort of solid. His king is very safe now, but uh, okay, I still believe that I'm slightly better here because I have a passed pawn, protected passed pawn, and uh, also there were some possibilities of breakthrough on the queen side with a5, but d6 was the main threat. d6 was the main threat, and I'm sort of winning now. Thank you. So who next? Aria, I mean, quite a strong opponent. So let's play. So I will play e4. I also play this sometimes. So let's play d4. And let's go for some funny line. Actually, b3 is much better than it looks. But uh, OK, one should remember his own preparation, which is not exactly my case here, sadly. So I don't, I no longer remember which castling did I want to make in this position with a short castling or long one. I analyzed it some time ago and even played it against some really strong young GMs and I was getting nice positions out of the opening with white. But maybe this time it's not so nice because I no longer remember where did I want to castle. B5, I think it should not work here because maybe I have some knight D5 ideas. So let's try what happens. I mean, bless queen side can also be exposed a bit in such lines. A5. So black has weakened his uh, queen side, but maybe it's not such a big problem for him. And now everything depends on who will be able to claim control over some important squares on the queen side. Not so easy and no increment. So I don't want to play c3. Maybe it's, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but I don't want to play it differently. So what can be done? Maybe I should play, just play something, anything. Not think for a half a minute or a move because it's not good in blitz, not recommendable. I should play anything and care about my time in the first row. And let's see what happens now. I'm not sure about what I played. I mean, it, my position was good, but it's no longer that great. So something has apparently gone wrong, but uh, okay, it's just blitz. So it's not a tragedy. Let's go for fun, for some fun. I mean, it's not great, but I need to play quickly. So it's better to have some idea and to go after it than, than not to have any and to lose on time.
Now it even seems to work because now my pieces are very, very active. So it might even work. It would be great if I were able to calculate everything here in time, which is not exactly the case. So let's just take, I mean, after e6, there was queen g5. No, it didn't work. So maybe immediate e6 was even stronger because f7 would have been more hanging, so to speak. But uh, even now it's good. I should have played it immediately, but I was afraid of some mating threats uh, against my king, which didn't quite work. I miscalculated somewhere. But what I played is also good. I'm winning material back and I will remain some material up. Yes, this queen g5 was what I disliked to with my knight on d6, but now there is no mating threat. I can insert this move without taking on c7. Uh, on f7 and I can take on d7 then, which seems to work now. So I only need to deal with the time travel now, which can still be a lot of fun. <sighs> Especially with this pace. Can I take on f7 after king g8 or not? I'm afraid there will be king takes f7. It doesn't seem to work. So let's just play a silly move. Okay, not silly. A good positional move. There is no threat. Maybe I should even pre-move king g2, but I'm afraid that that would go to e6 then. I mean, against knight, g, knight a3, there is... Yes, and now I'm winning. I'm winning a lot of material, but how to do this in the best way? Let's activate another rook. So let's play it like this. Actually, even sacrifice on f7 could work in such a position. Um, I guess it could, but I'm too lazy to calculate. Oh, I wanted to play e8. Okay, thank you. So I, I will accept very much, sorry, to everybody else. But I mean, this is one of the highest rated opponents so far. So I want to play something interesting and dramatic. Let's go for it. So it will be some Meran or anti-Meran and let's go. B3, why not? Bishop B2 allows E5, which is considered good for black, but uh, he needs to know, he or she needs to know what he or she is doing or what they are doing. Okay, so I know what am I doing. I just don't remember the lines. So let's play something seemingly silly, but the move has a point because I want to prevent g4 and to want to develop my bishop also. So let's develop my bishop first to stabilize the center. And then maybe I should do something on the other side of the board, but what can be done with it? It can be quite some fun here. Perhaps a3 is a move, and I'm considering some c5 stuff here, but perhaps it's too wild, a bit too wild to be good. So let's start with a neutral move. Rook g1. Let's see what comes next. It's my favorite saying, as you must have realized by now. What should I do? Where should my bishop go? I will go here to protect my king and also attack the opponent's king if needed. Well, not just needed, I just want to attack his opponents, my opponent's king. I, frankly speaking, don't like my position here. White has played it very nicely and uh, white has an edge or maybe even the advantage. Let's be objective at times. Hopefully we, he will not, okay, fine. Black, white could also consider some intermediate moves. I mean, G5 is not great, but removing 
rook b8 would not have been greater than. So now I have an intention. I think White can prevent it, but we will see whether he does or not, or he or she, whether they do or not. So now I'm happy. I was a bit afraid of g5. I want to play bishop a6 or knight a6, and it would not have been possible if g5 came first. But OK, I missed something, admittedly. I'm used to missing something, but I don't care. I can sacrifice an exchange when nothing else can be done. And it seems that nothing else can be done, but I'm still happy with it. I like chess. And I have counterplay, and I like counterplay. I can even take on a5 and threaten some forks, and I like forks. And maybe I'm even winning, and I like winning. So let's see. But quite many of white's pieces are hanging here. There are many threats, even knight d3 and rook b2. So now I have two minor pieces for rook and pawn. And material, it's not so terrible for white, but uh, I mean, my pieces are very active and uh, his king is really unsafe or her king, their king is really unsafe. Sorry for using his. I mean, given that 95% uh, of my opponents are men, I'm just used to uh, saying his, but I, I mean, there are many strong female players now coming, so m maybe I should get accustomed to using more neutral words in this respect. Words in this respect. So I want to attack on the king side. So let's go here. And now let's make some neat move. Uh, Certainly, knight takes d4, bishop takes g4. I missed, uh, okay, actually queen d7 was a little bit more precise because then I, my d5 pawn would have been protected in this line, but I can take with the g pawn as well. Okay, now I'm just winning. There should be some mate somewhere. So let's go for some, some funny line. Okay, thank you. Now I will play against someone else. Good man. Uh, so, oops, Kitty. I think I still haven't accepted for one hour. Sorry for this. So, oops, Kitty. So, I have already played e5. So, let's go for something else this time. e3 is a bit surprising, but definitely playable. I mean, it's a useful move, a normal move, and there is nothing wrong with it. Let's play g6 first. I don't want to play d5 too early because this could give white some extra options, but maybe I will play d5 now because now I'm already ready to castle and I'm happy with my position. It's important to be happy with what one gets. It's called positive thinking, which is generally appreciated unless we are speaking about COVID-19 pandemic. We have achieved a normal line, but black is a tempo up. Actually, I could have taken on B3 and pushed uh, E6 then, which would have been a reasonable way how to, yeah, how to exploit that tempo. I really like Black's position. It's a sort of green flag, but the position can also be reached from Karakan and some other openings. I mean, those uh, positions with isolated pawn can often appear from many, many different openings. And uh, it's good to know something about the structure, not only the lines, but where to put the pieces, how to play. Which pawns to take, which pawns not to take. Sorry, I was not I was not completely serious now. 
because one should not be completely serious when playing Banta Blitz. Is it allowed to beat kitties? I'm not sure if there isn't any law against this, but maybe it will not happen because the kitty is defending well, fighting well. So let's go. Perhaps I should have played rook e8 instead of this to preserve my bishop, which protects the king, because now my king is a bit exposed. And not just my king, I mean, I also missed something, but maybe it's not such a big deal. Maybe it's not so terrible. Oh, white wants to exchange queens. I'm happy with exchanging queens, especially if I somehow manage to protect the extra pawn, which might be more difficult than one would want, but it should be possible nevertheless. But OK, let's keep the pawn where it is. I want to play it actively. I'm an active player. Yes, this gives white reasonable drawing chances, but it's life. Let's go on. We will see what happens next. I'm relying on my technique and maybe not without reason. OK, now I almost stepped into some fork, which would not have been so great. So what can I do now? Let's make, let's make a seemingly bad move to confuse my opponent and speak loudly so that everyone could see my intentions. I want to pin a white's knight. So of course I missed the rook a4. It was not really nice. Good defense, really. Great defense. So now I will need to play on time. I mean, sorry for that. I mean, there are still some winning chances, although not great winning chances, but it would be a pity not to play this on. I even saw a Grandmaster losing such a position recently in Polish Extra League. Unfortunately, it was my teammate and a strong Grandmaster. I mean, fortunately, a strong Grandmaster, but unfortunately, he lost this drawish endgame. And it was not, it was not very good for our team. So let's go forward and see what happens. Oh, nothing happens. <laughs> OK, it was not so great. I should have played at least King G5 first. But uh, OK, let's try what happens now. OK, it's a draw. I know it's a draw, but what can be done? Draw is also a part of the game. OK. Yes, it's a draw, so maybe I should offer it. OK, sorry. I'm So what is this? Sorry, no more draw offers. Sorry, I was very lucky in this game. Okay. Very lucky, I'm immensely lucky. Okay, so good mank. So let's play d4 as usually. I'm mostly playing this in online games because I know this setup very well and I'm not showing much of my preparation. I have played hundreds of games in this line during the pandemic. Much more than one should play because the line is not so great, but I mean, it's not only about exact moves and about evaluation. It's also about knowledge of the plans. And I have learned quite something about the typical plans in this position. So that's, but I still tend to confuse move orders here because it's a complex, strategically complex position and very hard to master. So let's go rook c1 first, c5. 
maybe I should have played knight f4 first. It's a very tricky line, really. I have been playing it for years and I still don't remember when to move, when to make which move. Although it's also true that I'm mostly playing it in blades games or also in rapid when the opponent is not ready for it. I don't want to show my main prepar preparation in in blitz, casual blitz games like this. So where to go? I can also play bishop c2 to play bishop a4 after knight c6, but I think it's perhaps not such a great idea. So shall I play something very, very active? Now let's go for it. It's just fun. f5, and my intention is to play bishop g5 if black takes on d4. Let's go for it and see what happens. I mean, my move order was not great. Black has a reasonable position, but so has so does white. And if I manage to consolidate uh, and play something like f3, bishop f4, I will be very happy with my position because white controls all the important squares now, except for e4 and several others. And uh, okay, preventing b5, b4 is a good idea, but how can that be prevented? I don't, don't want to play a4 because, because it weakens too many squares, unfortunately. So let's play it quasi-positionally. Let's play it quasi-positionally. I mean, I would like to play it truly positionally, but it's not so easy. It's more complicated. And I will just ignore the threat. I mean, playing f3 was a part of my plan, but queen d6 could be uh, annoying then. And I'm allowing d4 now, but I think it's not such a big deal because I have ways to parry that. I would like to play bishop e5, maybe, but not now. Better not now. So let's go f3 now, and black cannot play queen b6. On the other hand, black can play b4, but I think it's not a big problem for me. Now I should improve my pieces. Maybe I will play g4 to prepare some attack on the king's side, we will see. But I would like to take on h6, but maybe it doesn't work, perhaps even in blitz. Let's go. I mean, this is not a great move either, but uh, I mean, in blitz, one should play quickly without asking too much what to do. Bishop e3. Of course, makes quite some weakness, technic, technical weaknesses, but at the moment I'm ready for it because I want to play rook e1 and there were some technical problems after other moves as well. Technical issues. I can even play king f2 actually at some point. Why not to stabilize my pieces here to protect them? I'm not sure if I want to play g5, perhaps better not, but king f2 can be a reasonable move anyway. And when it comes to g5, it's not necessarily such a bad idea, especially if the opponent is slow on time. But okay, let's play something more down to the earth. Maybe I will play g5 one day but not yet. So what comes next? I would like to play g5, but I mean, it's also risky because there could be knight h5, uh, queen c7 then. So I have prepared it slowly and I'm 
ready to deal with Black's activity now, and I'm ready to push g5 myself. d4 is quite stable, so let's go. It's a very aggressive setup, actually. <laughs> I mean, it does not look like the most aggressive opening, but it is very sharp. It can be very sharp. But it's just not trying to win in the opening, but ready to postpone the aggression to, till the middle game. So that's what I'm doing now. Let's go check. And another one. And another one on g8. And after rook c2, there is bishop takes c2 now. So that's it. Can I play rematch? I don't know. Maybe I will play rematch, but then no more rematches because there is not so much time. So only if the opponent accepts. Okay, I'm not going to wait. There are many other players. So you must. Why must? Okay, why must I lose to this? But I luckily cannot see the whole username. Maybe it's better sometimes. So let's play positionally this time. I like to play a variety of openings in my Blitz games because one should get acquainted with as many different structures as possible. And casual Blitz is just. Uh, I mean, this is related, but still not important. It's not a tournament. I mean, it's a good opportunity to learn more about some structures without uh, suffering problems. After queen e2, there could be knight takes e4, quite an unpleasant trick. So I will play it this way. I'm ready to lose one tempo after knight e5, but uh, I'm not allowing tricks like knight e4 now. or not yet, at least. That's more accurate. So let's play it this way. It's theory, and I even used to remember it some time ago in better years. The question is whether I should play a4 or not. It has some pros and cons. It weakens b3 and uh, loses a bit of time. But on the other hand, after a4, Black can never play b5 any longer. So let's see what happens now, whether b5 is a move or not. It happens to be a reasonable move, unfortunately. So the question is how to deal with b5 now. Okay, it looks pretty much equal. So again, something has gone wrong with my opening. But the game does not end in the opening. Let's play on. I'm afraid that d5 is not a great way to play on in this position. So let's play it positionally. I would like to double rooks if I get enough time for it. And I don't want to double them off the, on the F file, of course, on the C file. That's my intention. And unfortunately, now Black controls the only open file, which is not so great for white. I'm not so happy with my position, but maybe there will be a way to improve it. I can either take a pawn on B4 or Play knight b6, which also looks promising. But I prefer taking pawns. It's my life, lifestyle. I'm thin enough to take as many pawns as I want. So I'm enjoying. I'm getting hungry. And pawns are good for one's mood. Unless one gets mated. Mm. 
This is really unpleasant. Really, really unpleasant. There's e5 after knight e3. Not so great. Maybe I should have kept the pawn where it was because now it does not look really nice. There seems to be quite some counterplay. So let's attack instead of defending my pawn. If needed, I can push a4, a5 at some lines, in some lines. Maybe I will have to do that. Knight c4 is also an option. Quite a serious one. So should I go for it or maybe better not? Okay, I will try a4. Maybe there is some problem with it, but I cannot see it. So let's try. At the moment, everything is protected in my camp. You can see that we are. No, this isn't. I don't know if this is the protected playing zone we were playing in the. In the, the, the tournaments, but uh, I was just joking. It was a pun about everything being protected here in my position. Actually, after Queen B5, there are quite some interesting tactical motives, but I don't know whether they work or not. I mean, I'm getting short of time, so let's say Knight C4 is probably maybe a good move, but I mean, it allows some tactics, so I will try to play it safer this time. This also allows some tactics, but uh, hopefully it doesn't quite work. I mean, there are some tricks based on knight takes e4, but without queens, at least I should not lose. And I hope to win because my past pawns are getting strong. Queen c2. Now I have won some time, and hopefully I will be able to win the game as well. So let's go forward. The question is whether I should attack the rook or play a5 immediately. Let's attack first. I don't have much time left, but luckily we have this increment. And now I'm threatening a5, a7, a8, and it's not so clear what should black do against it. I mean, he can play, or she can, they can play also e5 at some point, but it does not look overly threatening. Am I not just winning here? I mean, there are some tactical tricks, of course, but I mean, knight d7 could be interesting to pin the knight, but I'm not sure if I need to do that. Maybe I should play anything but quickly. Let's play a6. It cannot be such a bad move. It can just be a bit bad. Let's see what happens now. Why not? There are some unpleasant threats, so let's protect against them. With the rook on f1, there would have been knight g3 and queen takes f1 in this position. That's why I played rook e1. Now I'm probably close to winning, but I still need to calculate something. I, I was more afraid of other move, namely bishop c3, because oh now I'm just am I not just winning? Okay, let's play bishop b6 to avoid some unpleasant tricks based on knight d3. And let's take it all and shall I take or maybe rook d1? Both should work, but. We just need to play quickly and, okay, I have enough time. It's just winning. I can even take, there is bishop g1. Okay. And a8, okay, so let's go. Actually, I could have taken and played knight a3, rook takes a3. 
Oh, we are, are we still going to play this? Okay, I, I will just show a funny line here. In this position, I can also play something like knight a3. And when black takes it, I can take on f8, king takes, and bishop c5, or fork, and then I'm winning the rook and winning my pawn. Sorry, I don't know what happens if I click on analyze. And I still need to accept some more challenges. So, Roy Mustang, uh, okay, Yahali, I played. Sispal, Yuka, Lachti, uh, 43 minutes. So, perhaps I should accept. I haven't played this user yet. So, now I will play just only some of those players whom I had not played earlier and whom I. Uh, and who are waiting for a long time, and then some people who, uh, some then perhaps some higher rated opponent, and I will stop maybe in half an hour. I will probably skip this one because the opponent is no longer there. I'm sorry about this, but I mean, there are other people waiting, so it looks reasonable now. Begemon, perhaps, and who else? Hex for one hour. Okay, I think I played Marium Fatima. All right. Sorry, what is this? Where am I? Okay, what is? Why am I in another zone here? There are two play zones now. I will need to fix the problem after this game. There seems to be something wrong. Oh, Siori. I don't know Siori. Why are you playing Siori against me? I'm an old game master who does not know any Siori. So let's see what happens now. Okay, I played this against David Kanyovsky at Czech Championship 2014, I guess, unless it was 2010. I assume it was 2014. And I won the game, but no longer remember how to play against this now. So let's play knight e5. It's not optimal because I would like to occupy the square when black when white cannot take on e5, but uh, even now it looks pleasant for white, for black. When you don't know what to do, attack some piece. Maybe it's not uh, the best piece of advice, but in Blitz it often works. Let's put it this way. Uh, I would like, okay, maybe. I have mixed feelings about this exchange, but uh, I did not want to allow White's castling, so let's play it like this. It's just blades. So it, if it's wrong, it is not a tragedy. <sighs> okay, the question is, what should I do next? I will threaten bishop d2 check. Why not? I have just trapped the queen. Sorry for not knowing the words, really. So who else is there who haven't I played? I mean, I played most of the players, so okay. Uh, Jamon, I'm not sure if three plus two is a good 
time control for now when there is little time left. So that this is the last time when I'm playing three plus two now because there is not so much time left. And I'm not sure if the game will occur. Sorry, I will probably abort it and also skip some challenges of players who have already played because there are many others. I played uh, Skitty, I think I played uh, that uh, early Mustang as well. So there was something else still. Sispal, I didn't, or did I play Roy Mustang? I didn't it's here, not for a long time. So, okay. I mean, there are some how new and new windows from. Just 24, so there is some problem with my settings, perhaps. Okay, so let's play something else this time. Very popular in bits. London system. The London system. Bishop f5 is a reasonable move. The only downside is that it weakens b7 and that white can start active play here very quickly. I'm playing various uh, systems against the London system with black, so I have quite some experience from online games, but I'm not sure whether queen b3 is the move, maybe. I should start with something else. I somehow don't remember it. After all, it's not the main part of my repertoire yet. So what can, can I do now? What should I do with my pieces? Well, I should undertake something quickly before Brett consolidates in this position. So let's play bishop e2 first. And let's have some fun. I admit that maybe it's not a great move, but I want to play something sharp. I'm in mood for sharp play now. And after all, black's bishop is quite exposed. So maybe it's even good, which is not common for my blitz opening choices, but from time to time it happens. But it does not necessarily imply that it happens also now. I have some doubts about what I have played because, for example, after this exchange, there is quite an unpleasant maneuver, which gives black access to the d3 square. So I'm not in time to trap the bishop, which is a bit of a problem. Yes, exactly. That's the problem now. I'm not very happy with it. I wanted to recapture with d1. Perhaps I should have taken on g6 first and then pushed h4 if black recaptured with the h pawn. Alternatively, I should play something else. But now it is getting very interesting. Very, very interesting. Just I don't know what to do next, what to do now and what to do next. So maybe this is anti-positional, but I don't care. I mean, there is limited time and uh, one needs to play something. So even playing inferior move quickly might be better than spending a plenty of time on spending a plenty of time trying to find something else. I mean, when I, Understand that it's anti-positional, it means that my positional understanding is not so bad, but in blitz one is not obliged to play positionally sound chess. I mean, it is nice when one can, but it's not the most important thing in blitz. And I like attacking and hopefully I might have some opportunity to show my attacking skills. to catch the Mustang now, maybe. 
enjoy black place it quite well. I like black's position almost. I mean, not quite. He's a pawn down, but I'm not sure about this bishop g4, but I wanted to get rid of the bishop. Okay, so let's activate the queen now. Well, I can catch the bishop. I mean, the question is whether it is worth it or whether I have some better ideas like some sacrifice on e6, for example, it could be quite tempting, but why couldn't I take the bishop when there is a possibility to do that? Now the main challenge is not to lose on time, but not only for me, luckily. After b3, I wanted to play bishop e, queen e4, but now perhaps I can play something better because there is queen takes g6. It's pinned. So who else is there? Maybe, I mean, perhaps Anna Fardu, WGM, sorry for not having accepted earlier. I mean, I haven't noticed that there had been a challenge pending for one hour. I apologize for this. I mean, it's chaotic on my part, but then I will only accept challenge from someone rated high and perhaps, and I mean, rated above 2000 perhaps, and then stop because, I mean, two hours are enough. And I don't want to lose speech. It would be a tragedy for such a talkative person like me. I can probably take a pawn now, but the question is whether I want to do that or not. The answer is that I want to take the pawn, but want to make some precautions first to make sure that I'm able to protect the c6 pawn while developing another piece and not leaving my bishop on f8. I mean, Karakan has been traditionally considered a safe opening or even a boring one, but there are many really sharp lines. And actually, I recently played a match against Grandmaster Michael Adams, who is very strong and very solid. And uh, I misplayed the third game terribly, and I was losing two to one, and needed to win with black pieces to stay in game in the game. And I played Karakan and went for some of the sharper Karakan lines and uh, eventually after a big fight, I managed to win. So it's not a boring opening and it can be quite sharp at times. I'm not sure about my last move because I allowed to bishop f4, which could lead to a strategically desirable exchange of uh, the dark squared bishops. Maybe there was f6 then, maybe not. I'm not quite sure, but I need not think about it now. I think I'm probably doing really well in this position. So let's play c5 and let's exchange everything and remain a pawn up. It looks like a good plan. It's a question how to recapture here because this could give uh, what some attacking options in another word, but hopefully not now, not here. Let's make a minor combination. Maybe it's even a good one. I have queen b8 then. Okay. I'm two points up and hope to win the game. Surprisingly. So 
someone is trying to contact me from Chess24, but uh, I mean, there is something in chat, so I will look at it after this game. Bishop e3 and so. I mean, it is enough just to protect my king against some counter attack, and then everything should be all right. So let's play queen b4, for example. I could also go queen e7, but I like active moves. So let's play something nice and active. And now I can exchange queens or keep them on the board. I mean, both is possible. Why should I play it safely? I will play actively. No need to play safe chess here. If g4 comes, I have queen f3 attacking f2, so bishop e3. So I guess this is very good for black. Bishop d2. I will just activate my pieces. Activate my pieces to win on time then. But maybe I should try to win in style. Okay, what resigned perhaps? Okay, I mean I can play queen g, queen d three or queen a two actually even. Okay, so now there is something in the chat. Could be the last game? Yes, it can be the last game. Uh, I oh, this one or the next one? Sorry. The, so should I stop now? Okay, so sorry, I should stop because there will be a broadcast of the Fisher Random World Championship starting very soon. So thank you for your attention. Sorry for not having accepted all your challenges. I mean, there was just limited time and uh, I tried to, and I hope you liked that. Uh, some games were quite difficult for me and uh, I was quite lucky at times. Uh, thank you for your attention, attention and have a good day evening, morning, or whatever time of the day. And enjoy the Fisher Random World Championship. It will be very interesting. Goodbye. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mark.